Formula One have just brought back a fan favourite onboard angle, the pedal camera. They demonstrated this within Lando Norris's McLaren during free practice one and two as he drove around the Silverstone circuit, giving us a live broadcast of his brake and throttle inputs. Now some teams have done this previously during their testing days for promotional footage by sticking a GoPro in the cockpit, but the last time we saw this type of angle in the live broadcast was back in the year 2000 during the Belgian Grand Prix on Pedro de la Rosa's car. Just like last season with the visor camera, funny enough also at the Belgian Grand Prix, this is the next step that Formula 1 are trying to develop their onboard cameras, with the hope that with this tech, it can be rolled out to all the drivers next season. The difference though with this angle is that we're now getting the reverse view looking towards the driver from behind the pedals, rather than facing forward like before. And it seems from online that the main consensus from the limited amount that we got to see during these free practice sessions is that fans really love this camera angle and want to see more of it. But how does this tech actually work? Well, this here is the actual camera which was used to show off Lando's pedal work. Just that of a small pinhole lens with a box containing the image sensor behind, with three mini LEDs attached to the camera housing, which in total just weighs 62 grams. It is mounted just behind the pedals, which could be accessed from removing the pedal covers and being bolted onto an already existing bracket in the cockpit. However, none of the processing of the image is done here. Its signal is sent down a multi-core cable, and this is the same cable which is used for drivers like Lando or Charles or whoever is using a visor camera. And this multi-core cable is what holds all the video and audio signals being taken from around the car. This is generated from the power conditioner taking energy from the battery, pulling around about 12 to 15 volts. The multi-core cable goes up to the top of the roll hoop where the T camera sits, and inside is the antenna which sends out the live feed. Now different broadcasters and different series use different ways to transfer data and video feeds back to the video compound, which is where they broadcast everything from. But in Formula 1 they use a 5 gigahertz system to transfer all the data across, and a 10 GHz system for the video, which is a really good high quality image, however it has a really short range. Which means that F1 has to place lots of antenna kits dotted around the track, so that at any time, one antenna is always collecting a signal from a car. So if you've ever noticed during a live broadcast that the onboard angle is kind of stuttery or a bit glitchy, it's because the video feed is struggling to find an antenna around the circuit, and it's particularly harsh when we go to street circuits like Baku or Monaco because you've got really tall buildings and trees actually blocking that video feed getting through. In the video compound is where the actual signal is received and can be processed to view an actual image and sync the audio with the picture. But as the signal is being processed remotely, it also means they can change the camera settings like the white balance, iris and its focus. This season, all the cars have five onboard cameras, including the 360 camera that sits on the cockpit. But currently, there's only a select few which can actually send out two video feeds at once, which is how we're able to see the pedal camera and the roll hoop camera combined. However, there is an internal recording device which can record all of those five different camera angles all at the same time and it all gets transferred after after the race, and it doesn't get affected by those weird glitching artifacts I mentioned earlier. And what's great about this is that we get to experience more angles which we might have missed during the broadcast. For example, when George spun his car in Canada, we only saw the incident from the roll hoop, but afterwards we were able to see the rear view angle and his face camera as well. But maybe you missed out on watching the pedal camera being shown for the first time, or even missed out watching the race, and maybe it's all because you forgot your friend Sky Sports login details. Well, hopefully today's sponsor, Surfshock VPN, can help with that. By using their VPN servers, you can digitally change your location to a different country. You might have heard about this feature before where you can change your location to a different country so you can watch a TV program which is only broadcasted in a certain country. And the same applies for this. By changing your location to Austria, you can head to Service TV which is an official broadcaster and watch the races for free. But it's not just limited to folk like us in the UK, Surfshock has over 3,000 servers across 95 countries, meaning you can unlock even more geoblock programs and services in different countries. So if you use my promo code MattAmos at checkout, not only will you get 83% off your plan, you'll also get three extra months for free and there's a 30 day money back guarantee so you can try all of this out and if it's not for you you can cancel with no risk make sure to click the link in the description below but a massive thanks to surfshark for supporting the channel and thanks to you for watching hope to learn a little bit more about the new pedal camera and i'll see you next time